We are in Mount Carmel Cemetery, located in Hillside, Illinois. We are coming up to the graves of one Vincent the Shamer Drusi, born April 28th of 1901 and dying on April 4th of 1927. Vincent is located in Section 12, directly in front of the Bishop's Mausoleum. Born in Chicago, and depending on who you ask, his birth name was Ludovico D'Ambrosio or Victor D'Ambrosio. During World War I, Drusi served in the Navy with honors. After serving in the Navy, he gets involved with petty crime. Some of these crimes included robbing telephone coin boxes and jewelry theft. Drusi was nicknamed the Schemer for his various grandiose plans, such as how to overthrow the government by assassinating everyone in command and then becoming president. Drusi was considered a comedian around his gangster pals, but to enemies he was a force to be reckoned with. One such comedic episode is Drusi standing along the sidewalk dressed in a priest outfit. A couple out for a casual Sunday stroll walk by. Drusi in the priest outfit yells out, You have a nice ass. As soon as the couple turns around to face the insulting priest, Drusi then blurts out, Not you, lady, your fellow. Another time, Drusi and his flower loving sidekick, Dean O'Banion, reenact a brutal fight with O'Banion dressed as a priest, kicking the living shit out of Drusi. One interesting side note relates to the fact that Drusi appeared in a pornographic film entitled Bob's Hot Story, made in Chicago in 1923. I did some online research into this film, checking the Internet Movie Database and among other websites, and was unable to come up with anything related to the name of the title. Moving along, O'Bannon is said to have hated Italians. However, his friendship with Drusi pretty much disproves this theory. Drusi and O'Banion mutually respected one another, as all the other Northsiders did. Keep in mind here that O'Banion understood the Italian language and spoke it in various different occasions. O'Banion hated the Jennas, who were Sicilian, but not Italians. On Thursday, August 31st of 1922, while joyriding on the Lord North Side, a, a gentleman by the name of Vincent the Skimmer Drusi is arrested for evading police. Officers Tui and Klatsko recognize and remember the notation that Drusi forfeited a charge for blowing up a safe in a tea shop. At this point, Drusi notices the cops and slams his foot on the gas, and a chase ensues. Crisscrossing in and around town and arriving at the Michigan Avenue Bridge, which crosses the Chicago River, Drusi sees a bridge opening up to let a boat pass through. In a desperation attempt to evade the cops, Drusi gives the car full throttle and hangs on for dear life as he makes an outrageously spectacular jump across the jackknifed bridge. However, it doesn't end there. The cops go one step further and also jump the bridge and proceed to corner the foot-running Northsider one block south of the river. On July 16th of 1925, Drusi is arrested once again on a new weapons charge. This charge stems from O. Drusi entering, of all places, with a weapon, the criminal courts building. He's freed on a $200 bond, and at the time of his arrest, he was being questioned in relation to Tony Jenna's murder. On August 20th of 1925, Drusi is fined $300 by municipal judge Howard Hayes for carrying a concealed weapon. Every time Drusi is seen by a cop, he is immediately frisked for weapons. Every time he is stopped, Drusi exclaims, Is this Russia? On November 14th of 1925, Drusi enters the Cadillac Motor Car Company, located at 2301 South Michigan Avenue. He kindly asks Mr. David Ziedman to use the telephone. Ziedman unfortunately refuses. Drusi, incensed at the refusal and with no weapon on him, struts out the door and gets a weapon from his buddy Michael Puggy White. As previously mentioned, Drusi can no longer carry weapons as the previous gun charge has made him an instant target for the coppers. Another gun charge would no doubt mean jail time. Drusi takes the gun from Puggy White and proceeds to beat the living hell out of Ziedman. On January 2nd of 1926, the dress shop owned by Miss Myrtle Fells is visited by Drusi and a husky looking blonde haired woman. Apparently Miss Fells has been spreading rumors on the north side that Drusi robbed her store of $5,000 the previous Thursday. 
Drusi, who is insulted at these allegations, sends a woman in to beat the living hell out of Miss Fells. The victim, Miss Fells, is slapped around while Drusi rounds up several customers at gunpoint and puts them in the rear of the building. After the severe beating, Miss Fells is warned to stop spreading rumors about the infamous gangster. Drusi and his accomplice both leave the store and speed off in a taxi.